There's a whole slew of equipment you can use to shoot a music video. It's easy to go crazy with all the gadgets such as cranes, jibs, dollies, and track. But believe me, I've directed a dozen music videos, and what I've realized is that you don't need much. Let's go over the bare essentials when it comes to gear. This is your paintbrush. Thankfully, we're at a point in time where people will watch a cool music video regardless of what format it was shot on. Thanks to the viral video phenomena, the world accepts the lo-fi look of entertainment. However, I recommend that you shoot with, at the very least, a 3-chip HDV camcorder. We're going to be shooting Healing Hands music video on a Z1, which is a HDV prosumer 3-chip camcorder. And the reason why I chose this camera is because it's inexpensive. Anyone can afford this camera. It's versatile, looks beautiful, and it's lightweight. In the end, it ain't the paintbrush. It's the painter. A silky, smooth, fluid head coupled with sturdy legs is a good investment. This is one of my favorites. It's a Sackler DV6SB. Using a tripod greatly increases your music video's production value. If you're shooting indoors in a dark space, I recommend that you have, at the very least, one bright light to ensure you have good exposure. Okay, one of my favorite lights in the world is called a Lowell Riffle Light. This light rocks. Why? because it sheds a gorgeous, soft, even light on the space and the face. I'm talking top shelf portrait diffused lighting. Everyone looks fantastic in front of a soft box. I've used it virtually in all of my music videos. You simply can't go wrong with this type of light. There are times you don't need to plug in a light to get a good shot. All you need to do is redirect what's there. One of my favorite production apparatuses is the reflector or bounce card. Aimed properly, you can get a nice flattering fill light on the talent's face. Not only that, you can add a sparkle in their eyes. Back in the day, I used to use a boom box with a CD with the music on the CD and lots and lots of batteries. Times have changed. We have MP3 players now. So what I did was I imported the song into an MP3 player, brought along a self-powered monitor, and make sure that you have the right adapters and plugs, and playing back is that easy. One way to make your music video look really expensive is to find tools to make your camera glide or float. In the film language, it's called craning or jibbing or dollying the camera. In this particular video I made, I rented a jib which is basically a seesaw with a camera on one end and a counterbalance on the other. I've also employed a glide cam. This steadies the camera nicely, giving the music video a pro look. Another method I use is my inline skates. I love to rollerblade, so I slipped on my skates and performed some very effective tracking shots. On the post-production side, here's what you'll need a desktop or laptop computer. I like to use my apples. I've been known to edit music videos both at home and on the road. You will need a non-linear editing software. And my software of choice is Final Cut Pro. But of course, you're more than welcome to use others such as Avid or Sony Vegas. You should also have a good quality external hard drive that uses Firewire 400 or 800 cable. You're editing media so you want a fast drive. I like to use a Lacey Rugged because you don't have to plug it in. It draws power through the computer, and it's portable. And there you have it, the basic gear needed to make a music video. Up next, I'll talk about where you can shoot your opus.